there was a boy walking down the road and he sees people gathered all together and they're arguing and arguing and they're like, oh no, we gotta go that way. This is where we gotta go. Where? And everybody's pointing to different directions thinking that that's where the place is. And the boy looks and he sees the sign on the floor. And sign, it's like a poster with like many, many arrows. He takes it, he puts it, and then he continues going. And everybody was shocked, like, wait a minute, what's wrong with this boy? So they caught up to him and says, wait a minute, how did you know that you need to go that way? And how did you know that the, the sign's supposed to be the way it is? He says, I don't know if I have to go that way, but I definitely know where I'm coming from. So when I put the sign pointing direction where I'm coming from, all others laid up to be the way it's supposed to be. If you know where you come from, it's much easier for you to go forward. Sometimes we take for granted our immigrant story. I did not want people to hide who they are and just be somebody else just because it's hard to explain. In public school, I was trying to fit in. That was my main um, way to, I think, survive. So like anybody would ask me, where are you from? Since I speak Russian, I would say I'm from Russia. And that would end and people would look at me like, you look different than other Russians that we met. And that was it. And it was very hard for me to explain what Bukharian even mean, because I live this life. So like, I don't know what's the difference I have from you, right? But I tried to fit in, even like, I changed my name to make it more American when I was in high school. And I think when I came to college and I actually said to myself like, I don't have to fit in. I could be who I want to be here. One thing that I've been doing for about three years now is I'm an adjunct professor at Queens College. It's a three credit course. And I teach Bukharian Jewish culture and history. So, why are we here? When do you think a Bukhari commuter arrived in New York City? A lot of times when people ask me about it, they say, is the majority of your students are Bukharian? And I say, no, we have like 80% of Bukharian and the rest everybody else who really, really want to learn. And it's interesting that for Bukharian students, it's much harder course than for non-Bukharians because they feel like I'm gonna come in, we're gonna talk about plov, box, which is food, and that's it. But when you, they're going into history and learning about different type of um, rabbis and histo histories and uh, dynasties and uh, periods we went through, it's, it becomes a really challenging topic. There was also a moment when I met with Aron Aronov um, who is the director of the Bukharian Jewish Museum, where he told me and he said, you know, we need to figure out a way how to support this place and also we have to figure out a way how to like bring people. From Afghanistan, when the United States of America... Well, let's open to tourists and people who are interested all around the world, whoever comes to New York and visit Bukharian Jewish Museum. But on top of that, bring them to a museum, tell them about how we ended up in Central Asia. Take them to the bakery, let them feel and smell what we eat and how we do it, and then finally take them to the restaurant and actually celebrate and do it together. We try to touch all five senses of human being, right? You'll be able to smell, touch, see, taste, kishmish, which is uh, raisins, black raisins, or, or walnuts um, that were brought all the way from Uzbekistan. You're gonna be eating food that Alexander the Great was eating, so just think about that, okay? I believe, and I strongly believe that, that the best way to preserve your culture, and it doesn't have to be for the Jewish community, I'm talking about every single person, immigrant, non-immigrant, is to create a family narrative. Because if you have a strong family narrative, then you could be able to stand on both feet very simply and very strongly, and you'll be able to walk into any spaces and be confident. Who were your grandparents? What did they do? Where did they come from? Why? Even if you're fifth or sixth or seventh generation American, there are still stories out there about the people. And I think that's something the Bukharian community can replicate very strongly. Till today, we do memorial events for our grandparents who passed away 100 to 200 years ago. We take care of our cemeteries in Uzbekistan. We take care of our cemeteries in Kazakhstan. Because if you know where you come from, you know where you're going.